This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting Squarespace.com Babish. So what's cool about flatbread is it gives us the opportunity to explore the three most common means of leavening for bread. First up, the lack thereof, or unleavened bread, an essential combination of flour and water that has sustained humanity for thousands of years. This particular preparation and combination you may recognize from Indian cuisine as roti or chapati. We're combining 260 grams of whole wheat flour and 70% of that flour's weight in hot water, or 182 grams, to the bowl of a food processor, where we're going to blitz it for about two Two minutes. If you've seen my episode on pizza dough, you know that the food processor is an excellent vehicle for gluten development, the building and strengthening of the network of strands of gluten in your dough. To see if your gluten is developed enough, you want to grab a little piece and see if you can stretch it out thin enough so that light passes through it, otherwise known as the window pane test. If it tears too easily or if it's too sticky, you can process it further or knead it by hand until it's smooth and elastic and supple and can stretch thin without breaking. If it's way too sticky, this is also an opportunity to work more flour into your dough. Dough. Once it's smooth, soft, and bouncy, you can either wrap it in plastic wrap and let it rest for 20 minutes to allow the gluten to relax to make it easier to roll out, or you can go straight into rolling it out right away. I'm going to grab a 50 gram or golf ball size ball of dough. I'm going to roll it out as thin as I can possibly get it, then pass it back and forth between my hands to knock off any excess flour, and then bring it over to the stovetop where I've got a cast iron pan preheated over medium high flame to a surface temp of 475 degrees Fahrenheit or just lightly smoking. Pop in our roti and let it sit for for about 60 seconds undisturbed. During this time, it should just begin to beautifully bubble. Take a peek, and once it starts picking up a little bit of color, we're gonna flip it over, letting it cook for no more than 15 to 30 seconds, during which time it's gonna start to really bubble up. Because you see, even unleavened bread is still technically leavened, our leavener in this case being plain old water. Once done cooking on the second side, we're taking the pan off the flame and placing the bread directly on the flame. And this is where the real magic starts. Watch in awe as the water evaporates into steam and fills up the bread like a balloon, sort of defying the term flatbread if you ask me. We're cooking it for less than five seconds per side before taking it off the heat and keeping all our warm roti in a clean dish towel. Serve hot with a little melted ghee and garlic, and use leftovers to make things like mini frozen breakfast burritos. Stuff with the low-fat ingredients of your choosing, roll it up, and you got yourself a fast, easy, healthy breakfast, if you don't eat them all before they make it to the freezer. For our next style of leavening, we're going to take a look at pita bread, which is leavened using yeast. We're starting by combining 120 grams of bread flour with 8 grams of instant yeast. Then we're adding 225 grams of tepid water around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Mix it all together, cover it, and let it rest until foaming, about 15 minutes. This is called a pre-ferment, and not only does it make the dough more workable, it improves oven spring, something very important with pita. Once that's done, we're adding another 240 grams of bread flour, 20 grams of olive oil, and 6 grams of kosher salt. Then kneading together using your favorite method, about 2 minutes in a food processor, 6 to 8 minutes in a stand mixer on medium speed, and anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes by hand, depending on your forearm strength and general gumption. No matter how you knead it together, we just want it to pass the window pane test. We need a strong network of gluten, not only for great texture, but so our pita can blow up like a balloon. Once you got it where you want it, we're going to roll it into a nice tight ball and place it into a lightly oiled bowl. Cover it with plastic wrap and let it rise at room temperature for one to two hours until it's about doubled in size. This is called the first rise, or bulk fermentation, and it develops the dough and improves the flavor and texture of our final bread. I got 600 grams worth of dough here, so I'm going to divide it into 100 gram pieces to make six pita. Or you can just eyeball it, you just want your pieces to be generally the same size. And then we're going to roll them against the table, pinching their edges so that they form a smooth, taut top. Kind of like pizza dough, the rounder you make these dough balls now, the higher chance you'll end up with a perfectly round pita. Arrange these with plenty of space between them on a sheet of parchment paper set in a rimmed baking sheet, cover with lightly oiled plastic wrap, and let rest at room temperature for about 20 minutes, or up to an hour if you really want to 
improve your dough's flavor and texture, plus make it way easier to roll out. Just like last time on a very well floured countertop, we're rolling this guy out to maybe a six inch round. A French rolling pin like this one is great because it gives you leverage and control over which parts of the dough you're rolling out. Make sure you get rid of excess flour by either patting it back and forth or using the pixie dust method. And there you have it, this pita is ready to get cooked and there are a few different ways that you can accomplish this. Probably the easiest way is on a pizza stone set in a 500 degree Fahrenheit oven that you've preheated for one hour. Pita bread is a lot like pizza dough, you want to hit it with as much heat as possible, as quickly as possible, so that it blows up like a balloon, cooks all the way through, and picks up some nice browning along the way. Give it a flip after about a minute and a half, and let it cook for maybe another minute and a half before removing and keeping warm in a clean kitchen towel. The need for high heat also makes the cast iron skillet a worthy contender, but the one-sidedness of this heat can cause a rather uneven pocket to form very thin on one side and thick on the other. Don't get me wrong, it's still going to be way better than store-bought, but it might be harder to make a sandwich out of. Due to its similarity to pizza, it stands to reason that the ultimate pita could be made in the ultimate pizza oven. Get this guy preheated to about 666 degrees Fahrenheit, mark of the beast, plop it in the center and watch it grow. Pizza ovens offer the perfect balance of conductive, convective, and radiative heat transfer that makes perfect pita pretty darn easy. It rises perfectly evenly, browns quickly, and is done in about 60 seconds. And especially if you're using wood fire, there really is nothing quite like fresh, hot pita you've made yourself. Store-bought pita tastes stale and flavorless and almost poisonous by comparison. You can use one of these halves to make the low-carb sandwich of your choice, but the classic remains freshly fried falafel, that's hard to say, freshly fried falafel and all the fixins. There we go, I did it. Next and last, we're going to take a look at chemical leavening. In this case, a simple yogurt flatbread courtesy of Bigger Boulder Baking. We got 360 grams of all-purpose flour, 10 grams of baking powder, and 3 grams of kosher salt that we're going to tiny whisk together until homogenous. And then we got 440 grams of whole milk Greek-style yogurt. Add that to the dry stuff, and it's the same story as before. Knead it out until it's smooth, supple, and passes the window pane test. The gluten development in this case is more for texture than function. Our bread is not going to blow up like a balloon, but the better we develop the gluten, the nicer chew our bread will have. Same deal, 50 gram golf ball sized ball that we're going to roll out about as thin as we can possibly get it. Between 6 to 8 inches wide, a perfectly respectable uh, circle size. But this time, because of all the beautiful milk proteins present in the dough, we're going to fry it in butter, oil, or ideally ghee. Get that ripping hot in a cast iron or carbon steel skillet, drop it in the round, and fry it on one side for about 60 seconds or until it is beautifully bubbly browned and burnished like this. Another 30 to 60 seconds on the other side, and you've got yourself the absolute best wrap you've ever had in your entire life. Or if you're feeling cheeky and you feel like using that pizza oven you got fired up in the backyard, you can make yourself a nice little quick flatbread pizza. I'm just loading it up with my favorite toppings, chicken, pesto, mozz, parmesan, and in your home oven or in your pizza oven heated to about 500 degrees Fahrenheit, we're dropping it on the stone, closing her up, and letting her get all melty and crisp. And before you know it, you've got yourself a quick and easy quote-unquote pizza. Especially quick and easy when you consider that all three of these breads, while best enjoyed fresh, freeze and reheat beautifully and easily, have myriad applications, and taste way better than their store-bought counterparts. Hope you guys try it for yourself, and hope you enjoy. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase. 